Hello, hello, this is Daniel Holzberger from Van Michael Salons. Hope everybody's doing well. I'm actually gonna adjust that a little bit. I hope you guys can hear me okay. Um, I am actually doing a uh, live video here today for you. Uh, that's gonna be a lot of fun today. Um, thank you to everybody in the Hairbrain community for logging on. I hope everybody's uh, enjoys uh, their day right now. It's actually here in Atlanta. It's a beautiful um, Monday, but it's actually a very hot Monday. So I'm happy to be back in the air conditioning. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna hop right into cutting some hair. Uh, I've, I've got my, my mannequin here and we're gonna cut something that's a bit more androgynous. Uh, I'm gonna use a uh, technique round graduation. It's a technique I've been using for years and years and years and use it every single day. Personally, I work in our salons half of the week and I work in our barber shops half the week. And this is a technique that I use both on men and women. On Thursday, I had a young lady in by the name of Ava. She was a new client. I cut this actual haircut on her. And then the next day when I was in the barber shop, I cut it probably three times on guys. It's a little bit longer uh, than the typical male fade, but it's definitely a very versatile look for um, both men, women, whoever want it. And it's very current right now. And it can be as edgy as you want or as traditional as you want. So I'm gonna dive right in right away. I'm saying hi to a bunch of people. I've got people coming in from the UK, uh, people from Greensboro, Kentucky. Thank you everyone for logging on. I am gonna be I'm here by myself. So I'm gonna be trying to answer any questions through the comments as quickly as possible, but please bear with me if, I, uh, if I'm a couple minutes behind because sometimes I get talking about hair. So what I'm gonna do with this haircut, let me see if you guys can see well. All right, as I'm started this, hair, this haircut off with very simple sectioning. My, the way that I've sectioned this haircut, it's literally right along the parietal ridge, a classic horseshoe section. Nothing, nothing, real intricate about this. I'm really just sectioning off from the top and the sides. And I'm gonna start the haircut off at the front in the sides. Um, can you point the down a bit? Yeah, I can, sorry. Let me see if I move that a little. Is that better? <laughs> so now, what I'm doing is I'm taking, so, when you start dealing with classic round graduation, the way that this shape works is it's gonna be shorter in the front and longer in the back. And in classic haircutting, your sectioning is going to create your shape. Therefore, your sectioning is going to be higher in the front and lower in the back. Now, depending on your angle, is going to depend on how different how different the length is between the short and the long, as well as the amount of weight, because the higher of an angle you get, you do become a little more extreme in uh, change in length. However, you're, by over direction, you become much higher in elevation, which ends up making the haircut significantly flatter. And that's what I'm gonna do right now. Um, if you think about a classic Dorothy Hamill wedge or a um, classic Firefly from the 1960s and 1970s, you're talking about something that was really cut at pretty much a 45 degree angle of sectioning. I'm going to be a bit higher. I'm actually going to be almost as high as the hairline. So if you think about the hairline, mine, mine keeps going away farther and farther, but you're at not quite 90 degrees straight up and down, but you're pretty high. So I'm actually going to be somewhere in this like 75 degree range. And what I'm going to do is I'm just taking a diagonal back section, combing that forward, pushing this hair back and away so that I keep my work very clean because my actual first section is going to be the, the basis for the rest of the haircut. So I wanna make sure that I really pay attention to get this right where I want it to be. I also know that this is gonna be a connected cut or slightly disconnected through the front at the top, but the hair that's gonna push away from the face the length is going to be determined by wherever this first snip happens. So I'm gonna somewhat eyeball it that I want this to hit just above the cheekbone. So I'm gonna pull this hair forward and I'm leaving the length, I would probably say about an inch and a half to two inches long. Now this, is, this technique 
is very versatile. So you can definitely cut this really short or you could cut it really long. So my first section, just it's got graduation because of the angle, but you can see it's fairly flat. It doesn't build out. It stays pretty flat, and that's what I want. And even with a mannequin, it's staying flat. Gosh, I've got people from Norway and Jamaica, from Mexico. Um, I guess <laughs> that helped uh, Kim. The, the angle was better now. Um, and also, I feel like this angle now is also letting me kind of let you see that this is a little bit of a flatter shape, which is very nice. So thanks for the pointer. So my next section is going to be parallel, slightly diagonal back fairly vertical, sectioning this hair away, and I'm combing into my section, then into my guide. That's gonna let me build a little bit of length, build a little bit of weight, but not much. I'm trying to keep this hair pretty flat and pretty close to the head. You know, especially with a mannequin, it can expand so much. I've got people from Edinburgh, Panama. I've got New York, London. I've got Houston. I've got England. I'm so happy to have everybody coming in. I really love the harebrained community. It's one thing that is really cool about our industry is the fact that harebrained is out there, that we have the ability to connect with people all across the world and, you know, just communicate, share it, education, um, not every, not every industry has something this great and really my hats off to Gerard and to Randy for developing this years ago to have the, the intellect, the foresight to really, really do an amazing job. So now I'm working through, so I've worked through this side panel at this point, the head kind of changes, you know, the hair, the hairline dips down. So I'm going to cross check very quickly just to make sure that. I'm nice and balanced, you know, that I don't have any extra weight anywhere. And no problem there whatsoever. But now what I'm gonna do is my section's gonna become much larger, okay? It's going to end up, I'm actually gonna work from up all the way down to the bottom hairline. So it's gonna be one fluid section. I'm just gonna continue with my shape. I've got people from here in Georgia. I love seeing that. Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, hello to everybody. Australia. Gosh, this is great that I've got everybody. Oh, my friend Raphael's from uh, Columbus, Ohio. And uh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, I'm getting uh, some feedback that I'm doing good with the camera angle now that I've changed it. And, I will continue to work around and move and I'll do my best to try to give you guys the best vantage point possible. Um, if I have, if you guys see anything that I can do uh, to make things better for you, please let me know. So from here, I'm continuing, I'm now working. So here's the thing about this, this is a lot of hair, right? This is a long section from basically the parietal ridge all the way down to the bottom hairline. So it's a lot of hair to work with. So I'm actually gonna break this into a few sections. So I will comb this forward. I will comb this down. This is still the same section, but I'm just breaking it down. I'm making it a little bit easier to work with. Uh, and then as I pull out, because of this long hair that we're taking off, I only have to have this much in my hands. Makes it significantly easier to work with. And now what I'm doing is I'm following my guide. Okay, my guide is right here and I'm following it into the nape with my sectioning. And as I get just past what is called the mastoid bone, I start to tip the head down. That mastoid bone is right where the side and back of the head meet. And I'm letting the head dip just a little bit so that my fingers can get a little tighter. And that way, I can really cut close without, you know, really wrecking my back or my wrist. But, um, you know, I've been doing hair for 23 years now, something like that. Uh, and I have had a lot of injuries in my life. And so I'm really big on trying to take care of my body as much as possible. Um, well, I've got people from Pennsylvania. I got people from uh, California, New York. I'm not a hairdresser. <laughs> 
I, I love it when I hear people that aren't hairdressers that enjoy these videos. Hopefully this uh, video can keep you entertained even though you're not a hairdresser. So now, as you can see, I've worked all the way through. So now I've got my guide to continue working forward. And I'm just working with continuing with parallel sections. This section is still very vertical. It's almost completely parallel to the front hairline. So you can see I've just kept working and working and working. I'm gonna continue working through until I get past the center of the back. Oh, we've got somebody who went to Cincinnati of Ada. I actually know um, quite a people. That was actually where I went to beauty school. So uh, from my, uh, my old stomping ground. So somebody just asked about the way that I'm holding my scissors. So here's the thing about my scissors. I only move one blade, right? So you only move one blade. This is called your still blade. This is your still blade. This is your moving blade. Uh, it's gonna make it much more exact if you move just one blade. So what I'm doing is this, I'm cutting pretty much palm to palm, but if any point I need to actually move and shift my hand down, what I do is I take my, I still have a lot of torque with the first, uh, with my still blade, but what I do is I just move my thumb to barely be in the moving uh, thumb hold so that I can get a little bit tighter into the nape. Um, it's, it's really one of those things that a lot of times people ask, you know, how do you do that? It looks kind of weird, but what I have found is it's helped my wrist through the years. And as I cut this section, I'll explain what I'm doing. So here I'm just cutting traditional palm to palm, right? Cut to my second knuckle. Now I've got the next piece. I'm starting to dip in, and so I flipped my scissors around, and now I'm able to get a little bit closer instead of having to turn my wrist so hard. If you turn your wrist, all of a sudden you're just putting tension there. Hairdressers are notorious for getting carpal tunnel already, so if there's anything I can do to keep that from happening, I do. So I just kind of move and then just move a little bit. Um, yeah, I mean, people are, a couple of people saying that uh, the thumb and finger control is the most comfortable, absolutely. So once again, so now that I'm down in the nape, my, my hands are very tight in, I just flip around and I'm just using the thumb and it just keeps me from having to, to alter my wrist at all. You can take a step back and still feel like this, but you can look right now, as I do that, you can see my wrist is really having to, to torque up, whereas if I go like that, it's not moving at all. Alrighty, so I'm now working through, I'm just cleaning up the outline as I work. One thing that I'm just now starting to feel is I'm feeling like the hair is getting a little dry. Um, you know, hair shrinks as it dries, so I don't want that to happen. I wanna make sure that I keep it damp. Either cut the hair completely wet or cut the hair completely dry. I don't really like to do in between. You know, hair's a fabric and it stretches so much more when it's wet, so if you're pulling with tension the way that I am right now and the hair's dry, but then the hair that you're holding, the longer hair is wet, you're gonna end up with a different spring as that hair dries and the hair that is wet will actually be a lot shorter because of the, the, the amount of tension you're able to get with wet hair versus with dry hair. Flipping my scissors over again for everybody so that I can get really close and tight into the nape. I'm gonna keep working around. So now I've 
a lot of people stop once they get to the center. You're gonna see I'm gonna do this section plus one more. Um, the reason I do that is because it is a rounded shape, which is what I had said before, it follows the head shape, the head is round. And I find if I just stop at center and then work to center, I end up with weight in the center, almost like a, a little wedge piece. And that's not what I wanna create. I wanna create a fluid round shape. I want this to be able to actually be as tight as you want also. Like the, um, with the young lady Ava that I cut on Thursday, I actually went over the outline with clippers. I mean, I took it down to almost to like a skin fade on the outline and that really, I mean, it looked really sharp, uh, but I would not have been able to do that if there was a wedge. And see right there, I over directed too far at the last section uh, because I was shifting. So now just going back through the cross checking, taking off that little bit of weight that I had right in that. I didn't, I don't want to have any kind of a point anywhere. So, oh, it's from Sri Lanka. That's amazing that you're that you're logging on. I think that's the first time for this. Do you cut and refine the outline as you go, or do you finish the entire haircut and then refine? Um, honestly, if I was to tell you in theory, I do it at the end when it's all dry. To be completely honest, as I see things, I will refine. So. I, I don't want to say that there's only one way to do it, but hypothetically, you're supposed to refine once it's dry um, because the outline is going to shrink up, okay? It's going to lay differently than when it's wet. But for myself, I've kind of been playing with these mannequins for so long, I know what they're going to do. And if it just doesn't look really that good to me while I'm doing this, I'm just going to clean it up and fix it as I do it just because for my own personal um, taste level, you know, it's just my own, the way that I want to see it. But, uh, no, typically you should wait until the hair is dry because the outline's going to change. But, you know, the, for every rule that I tell you, I'll probably break it as well. That's what rules are for, you know? You're supposed to get really good at the rules so that you can follow them, be precise, have true precision, do everything just right, and then start to bend them. And then eventually, at some point, you can even break some of them. But it's only after you've mastered doing them properly that you should start bending and breaking the rules. One thing that I always tell people is this. So I come from a background in which we were really strict on the way that we section, the way that we uh, check haircuts, everything. Everything's very strict and very precise, but here's the thing about it. What I have found through the years is that precision, that, that being extremely strict is so important. However, you also have to realize that this is organic material. This is hair. It is a living, breathing thing. The, this is a person you're working on. So every rule is going to change and every rule is going to bend and every rule is going to be broken because we're not dealing with a piece of machinery. We're dealing with an actual living being. So I, it, it took me a while to understand that, but now that I have understood that it's really made me a better hairdresser overall because I'm now able to bend the rules. I mean, at one point in time, I also thought that clippers were like the worst thing in the world. And now, you know, I do bald fades all the time. So it, it's amazing how, as your, your career goes on, you will adjust. All right, so now I'm gonna try to uh, find the best angle for you on this side. And on this side, I'm gonna do exactly the same thing. I'm gonna take that diagonal back section, push this back, clip the hair away. Maybe a little more. Um, oh, somebody from South Africa and from uh, Croatia. I guess it's raining there. Um, we seem to get rain almost every day, but it's not till like at night here in Georgia. It is super warm right now. So I'm gonna tilt her just a little away from me. I think that's gonna be the best way. And I'm gonna elevate to see if you guys can see. Set. Let's see if I can move a little more. I think that'll be your best best vantage point.
once again. So now I'm gonna check for balance. So get out of your way, guys. And look, so I left it just a smidge longer than the other side, which is perfectly fine. I'd rather take a little bit more off than have to recut the other side because I took it uh, too short. So now I'm gonna pull out and just take another quarter of an inch off. There we go. Oh, I'm super happy somebody said that they were so excited for this. That makes me so happy to hear. And more people from South Africa and from Belgium. I love hearing that there's people all over. That's the great thing about this harebrained community is it's all over the world people are logging on. So once I've done that first section and now that I'm balanced, I'm gonna do the exact same thing as I did on the opposite side. I'm gonna work my first three or four sections cross check and then work into the back. And really this technique, once you get it down, is a very, very quick technique as far as cutting hair. I mean, when I do clients in the salon, you know, I book on a 45 minute. So you, know, you work on a 45 minute, you, you gotta be pretty efficient, you know? You, you can't be just dilly-dallying around, especially if you have somebody come in with long hair that you've gotta blow dry. And, you know, I, um, I work with an assistant when I'm in the salon, but when I'm in the barber shop, I don't even work with an assistant. I do all my own shampoos and any blow drying. So that actually, um, you know, you, you have to stay efficient with your work. If you're doing something technical, you're doing a round graduation, a square layer, whatever you're doing, you need to make sure that you know what you're doing and that you do it efficiently and clean so that you are able to do, you know, clients back to back to back without, you know, wearing yourself out or killing yourself. Once again, flipping that away. So here, once again, this is where I'm working through to the back, into the nape. As I work into the nape, I am actually going to be going real nice and tight, but I'm gonna cut this into basically two or three different panels of this one section so that it's easier for me to control. Oh, I just, uh, my buddy Gino Chapman just logged on. Hey buddy, how are you doing? Um, a, a couple of different people mentioned that they love these haircutting videos. Uh, somebody from Connecticut, oh, they, uh, you know what? I love it when I see people that, uh, that I've taught a class from that they log on to. It really makes my day when I see that. So back to what I was saying before. So this panel or this section is a long section of hair. So I'm kind of breaking it into one, two, three. So then I'm able to control the hair and keep my work clean. So now I can take this, push this down and cut. Then I can take my next pan, my next section of the section and work a little bit tighter, just following the guide. And then I'll tilt her down a little bit more so that I can get real nice and tight into the nape. And once again, flipped my shear so that I'm not torquing my wrist too much. Somebody asked about <laughs> refining the outline. Yeah, I have a tendency to just do this as I go. Not really, again, it's just kind of bending the rule a little bit. And back to what I was talking to before about, you know, hair stretches so much more when it's wet than when it's dry. I don't want the hair to dry as I'm cutting it and my guide be dry and the hair that I'm cutting be wet because as that hair that I cut dries, it'll end up being shorter than the guide. Then taking a diagonal back section. These are very vertical diagonal back sections. This is really, I mean, uh, I was teaching in our barbershop earlier today 
and working with a young man who's a phenomenal barber, unbelievable barber with clippers, but he wants to get really good with scissors. And at Van Michael, we're really big on making sure that everybody's good with every tool. We don't want to have, you know, barbers that can't do an amazing haircut with the scissors. So I've been working with him strictly on just two things over and over again, classic square layers and classic round graduation. And so this kind of a technique is something that I have him working on over and over again because I want him to get really good at proper sectioning, proper, proper cleanliness, um, making sure that he is as happy or as strong with his scissors as he is with his clippers. Because, you know, you, you never know. You get that client that comes in and says, hey, I, I want, you know, a scissor cut. I don't want a clipper cut. You need to be able to do it. You need to be able to do whatever the client wants especially in this day and age, you know? I mean, really with this day and age, we're really lucky uh, at Van Michael to be as busy as we are. I mean, shoot, we're running at about 85% of what we were doing this month last year. I mean, year to day, like we're, we're staying busy and you know, the world has not, not, you know, Definitely getting your hair cut is not the biggest priority to people in the world anymore. So you've got to really make sure you're able to do whatever it takes to make the client extremely happy. So now, once again, elevating, making sure this hair falls away. I'm only dealing with this small of a section. Um, if you think about this also, saw a hair I missed. So if you think of it also, you know, your fingers, once you get past that second knuckle, the webbing of your hand has a lot looser um, tension. So by me pushing that hair away, it allows me to just work with a section that size rather than trying to carry all of that section and have, you know, the, it's gonna be a much looser tension trying to carry all of that at the same time. So once again, Pull it out, I let that fall away. And one thing I tend to do whenever I'm cutting just about any shape is I like to stand right in front of my work. If I'm cutting, you know, if I am cutting a round shape, there's no reason for me to stand right here the whole time. I need to be working and working around to create a round shape. Uh, I'm very big on actually using my chair, uh, particularly like when I'm in uh, the barber shop, I hardly move from one spot. I actually will just move the client around quite a bit because I find it's much easier on my back, my shoulders, my everything if I just move them, but I'm constantly moving them. I see people just uh, kind of get stationary and stuck and don't move their client and then all of their haircuts, their balance is way off. So now, again, coming through vertically. Oh, there's my buddy Rob Cook. He's just uh, logged on. Uh, somebody's saying that they've been um, doing this for 13 years and it's still really interesting. Well, I'll tell you what, I've been in this industry since I was 13 years old because my mother owned a salon and that's why I started goofing off cutting my friends and relatives hair. Well, and I'm definitely, not a spring chicken anymore and it is still interesting to me every day is very interesting to me um it's it's amazing also there's so many different facets to our industry that really have kept me interested in it for 20 something years now so i really have to say it's a it's a it's a great great industry but yeah my buddy rob cook just logged on um He's actually the reason I work for Van Michael. I was uh, living out in California and he recruited me. And so uh, I, gotta, I gotta tell him thank you every time I see him for uh, making me make the move over here. I thought I was gonna be moving back to New York and he talked me into moving to Hotlanta. So now I've crossed through. I'm basically just taking a little bit of weight off of this top section. Um, there's a touch of weight here, and you know the reason why? Because I had the head tilted more than I did on the opposite side. The other side, I didn't have it tilted as much. I kind of did a little more tilting for the 
for the camera so that you guys could see better. And by doing that, by her head being tilted just a little bit more, instead of being an angle like this, I was an angle like this, just a little bit steeper. So that left a little bit of weight at the top. But one thing I found through the years, I used to be so regimented about, oh, the girl's gotta be perfectly straight up and my arms have to be perfect and this and that. And now at this day and age, I realize, hey, I can make little adjustments. It's not the end of the world. So I'm going through now and just cross-checking. And really, my shape's very good and clean. It's just right where the right side and left side meet here in the middle that I had just a little bit of refining that I need to touch up. Just a touch. see that just a little bit of weight and that's the hair that has been cut going this way and then being pulled back this way nice looking good okay so very high round graduation. <laughs> and then Rob is making a, a joke about how Atlanta is hot, but he's saying it as if it was uh, like a couture hot, not necessarily a uh, 75 degrees above boiling hot. So now, top section. So if you were to cut a classic round graduation, you would be cutting all of this horizontally. I'm not cutting a classic round graduation. I was just cutting a, using the technique of round graduation for the top, for the underneath. Now what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna work with a little bit of bias haircutting. Um, oh, that was really sweet. Somebody just wrote in, Caitlin, that she hopes to be as good as me one day. Well, you know what? I promise you, you can be. If you work really hard at it, you can, because Rob Cook will attest to you that I had zero talent naturally. My, my talent and my expertise comes through just a lot of hard work. There's no getting around it. There was no God-given talent. My sister's a hairdresser as well. She was able to French braid her own hair, cornrow her own hair. She was able to do anything with hair at like eight years old. Me, I couldn't even section through uh, hair forever. I was just terrible at it, but I really have worked very, very hard. And for probably the first 10 years of my career, I hardly ever took a vacation. I was talking to somebody today about, I had a girlfriend for six years in my 20s and we only went on one vacation. Every time we had time off, I was going to take a haircutting class. We were going to do a, um, go see a hair show, go do a photo shoot, do something that had to do with the industry for the first decade. I didn't take any um, time off at all. All of my time off was to learn. And uh, I greatly, I, I am an extreme believer of being a student for life. I mean, prior to COVID, the week before COVID, I was in London taking a barbering class at Menspire. So I, I still to this day, you know, I'm in my forties and been doing this since I was a teenager and I'm still taking at least one, if not two classes a year. And now, and then, you know, when we were going through quarantine, I mean, my wife was so sick and tired of watch of me being online watching haircutting videos. She's like, aren't, aren't you sick of those yet? Uh, no, I mean, I still find it fascinating. So what I'd mentioned is I'm gonna cut on with a bit of a bias. So the way that I'm gonna cut this haircut is I'm gonna use diagonal sectioning through the top. And the, I'm gonna work diagonal, 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 diagonal. And what I'll end up doing is instead of pulling straight out, or straight up, I'm actually gonna fold the hair up and over and cut all to this side. And then I'll do a mirror image, diagonal, 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 coming to this side. And it's once you've done this technique, it's really quite fluid and, and very good and easy. But at first it seems a little weird because it's not the way that you typically over direct hair out of the, out of the part. What I'm doing is I'm gonna push this hair forward. Okay. 
and I'm lifting this hair. I'm gonna use my, my graduation point from the underneath as my guide. Pull this hair up. See if you guys can see. Do I have a few tips for you? The biggest tip, this is gonna sound crazy, or, or maybe it will or won't, but the biggest tip in cutting hair is this. Learn to section really clean. If you learn to section really clean, you're gonna end up being a much better hairdresser. You're just gonna find that whether you're doing color, cut, whatever you're doing, your sectioning, if you make it really clean, is gonna be the best way of making you the the, the most um, precise of a hairdresser. You, I'm, I'm out of sight, okay. Oh, am I out of sight? Is that a good thing or a bad thing? <laughs> oh, that's a good thing. I thought you meant that the, the mannequin was out of sight. Um, I love your attitude about education. I've been doing this. Oh, I love to hear that. That I mean, honestly, you know, my my mother is now retired, but she was a hairdresser. I mean, she's 71 or 72 years old now. And she was, I mean, she was, I remember her going to Miami and taking classes at Sassoon after she'd been doing hair for 50, 50 something years. So yeah, you should totally always be an educator. You should always be a student for life. So once again, I'm taking a diagonal section. I'm working up and back. And what I'm doing now is I'm starting to cut with a little bit of a bias, which is a shift in the haircut. So I'm actually shifting up and out as I'm cutting this. It's creating a little bit of like a scoop through the hair. What that ends up doing, sorry guys, can you move the camera? Here, I'm gonna move the, ma the mannequin better for you. See if I can get this. And... So here we go. So now I think you can see pretty good. So I'm working this section and I'm cutting. And as I'm cutting, I'm shifting. And as I'm shifting, what ends up happening is the hair I'm cutting into the hair, okay? So the hair, when I pull it up at a cross check, it, it curves, it creates um, a different effect because what happens is that curving in it ends up making the hair hug the, the head much more than actually building out. If you just cut a diagonal line um, vertically, what ends up happening is the hair creates a lot of volume through the crown, which is fine. But this is actually going to keep a little bit of volume, but it's gonna let it hug through the sides. Just makes it a little less uh, mushroomy. All right, so now let's see if this angle still works. So here's my guide from the underneath. I'm just cutting with the tips of my shears. And this is a technique that a gentleman in the 60s named Roger Thompson, who was a educator and one of the you know, very first art directors for Vidal Sassoon, was very infamous for using in a lot of his shapes. And then in the 90s, a gentleman by the name of Tim Hartley, who um, I've gotten to know very well through the years and like to call a friend and have definitely had some great times with and really admire his work. He's really been one of those people who's been instrumental in my life um, from an inspirational standpoint and educational standpoint. He did an actual haircut for a Vidal Sassoon collection called The Bias, in which this technique was used. And that really was when you started to see this technique used a lot in those mid to late 90s. Oh, so this person is being extremely nice to me. Um, are you going to go live again after this time? Because I find it really interesting and I learned a lot from it. Yes, uh, well, so here's the thing. Van Michael Salons, we do a video every month now for Hairbrained. Um, and 
It's not, it's always either the second or third Monday of the month. And we will continue doing them through the rest of the year, hopefully into next year. Um, I need to talk to Courtney and Gerard about how much they want us to do them. Um, I myself don't do every single one of them. I like, uh, I've got an amazing team that I work with and I think people would probably get bored if they heard me every month. Um, but I am on a lot of them and if I'm not actually cutting, sometimes I'm emceeing them. I just emceed one a couple of months ago for a friend of mine named Becca who did an amazing dry cutting technique. So we like to try to do a, a lot of, get a lot of people in and bring you a lot of different education. So, but yes, we will be doing more. And then um, this person named Ron was nice enough to say that I'm an amazing, uh, amazing educator. And if I could talk about the scissors. Yeah, so the way that I'm holding my scissors is this. Um, so he says that he's also, sorry guys, I'm trying to read more of his session. So he's been trying. So here's the deal, I'm holding my scissors like so, I'm making sure that this blade, the steel blade does not move at all and I'm just moving my thumb. But then also what I'm doing is as I'm on the top, I'm still only moving my thumb, but my thumb has moved. Instead of being like so, because I'm cutting up and out, my thumb is just on the outside. See, it's just on the outside. So I'm able to just cut up and out. And it ends up letting me kind of um, make a nice scooping motion without actually um, taking chunks of the hair because I am cutting at a bit of a scooping motion. And then what I'm gonna be doing now is doing the same shape on the opposite side. <laughs> yeah, Rob just asked me what kind of scissors these are. These are actually Van Michael scissors. We have our own line of scissors now. Um, Van is, uh, you know, he's got some great connections around the world and these are some amazing sh scissors. These ones are actually uh, Japanese steel forged in Japan and um, they're, they're awesome. I mean, these are awesome. The, mine are small. I like using small ones. These are just uh, five inch shears, but I find that they're just very nice, classic. Got a little ball bearing so they don't move at all um, or they don't jerk at all when I'm actually moving the one blade. And the other thing that's nice about having a small shear, I mean, not to tell people they can't have a larger shear, but with a small shear, I can show you as I pull this up. So I'm only cutting to my second knuckle, right? So my shears blade never actually gets longer than it. And I just keep working. And so as I'm starting to do that little curve, I'm able to use the tips of the shear and I'm making little carvings by having small shears. If I had a larger shear, you can do it, but you have to actually make a, a little bit more of a, a scoop with your with your um, fingers so that the, the you're only using the tips of the shear. With a smaller shear, for me, it's a little, I find it works just a little bit better. So now, I'm, again, I'm taking another diagonal line. I'm pulling this to the opposite side and once again shifting up and out but yeah these these scissors are phenomenal they're um uh they're like 240 dollars is what they retail for which is just an amazing price because they are a vg10 which is like on a scale of one to 10, it's a 10. So they're an amazing scissor for the price, like unbelievable. Um, if anybody has any questions, just put in the comments about it, um, remind me, I can uh, put the link to the scissor uh, company, to the website, if you'd like, um, up in the comments when I'm done with this uh, demonstration. So up and out. And then here's my last section. Okay, there's my guide underneath, my guide from the bottom. Now I've got a bit of disconnection in the front. Oh, my buddy Brandon just logged on. Um, <laughs> you know, 21 years ago, I was Brandon's assistant, which is crazy. Um, and 
being his assistant, I actually saw him use um, this that technique, the bias technique, over and over on his bobs. Even if he wasn't doing any kind of a disconnection like that, just to take that extra weight out. And it's really, to be honest with you, I mean, obviously, Tim Hartley and Roger Thompson opened my eyes to the to this technique, but seeing it in a salon, you know, used 15 times a day, I have to give Brandon credit for that, definitely. Um, do I cut my own hair? Um, well, what's left of it? Sometimes, usually. Um, I do actually work in our barber shop now, and so very frequently, uh, I'll have somebody give me a nice tight bald fade. But sometimes, you know, hey, I, I'll cut my own hair, definitely. Um, Oh yeah, somebody said definitely put up the link for their scissors. I will definitely. They're um, where are they made? They sound great when you're cutting. They're they're forged in Japan, and then um, depending on which models we have, we have models that are that are actually designed for um, beauty schools, and those are um, put together in actually in Tennessee, um, but the higher end ones are put together in uh, Japan. Uh, so now. I'm pushing this forward, um, but we get all of our um, scissors and um, and it's interesting. So like <laughs> to get into being a nerd about scissors, there's so many different parts to the scissor. This little rubber stopper comes from China. This this ball bearing comes from Japan. This little finger tang comes from China. So the, when people ask, you know, where are they made? Well, <laughs> they're made kind of all over the world. Um, but uh, we actually have a small um, assembly plant uh, here in uh, in Tennessee, so that uh, that's where a lot of our stuff is. But these, the high end ones, which are still only two hundred forty dollars, they're put together overseas in Japan. Um, and then, yeah, they were asking where they're made, and they sound great. They're awesome. These are really great scissors they are absolutely great so last thing that i'm doing now is i'm kind of coming back over my section it was extremely exaggerated the disconnection through the front and so now i'm just coming back through and taking a little bit off of the very front and you can see this is a really cool long haired look in the front or it can be pushed back. And that's actually how I find people have been wearing it more than anything, is kind of pushing it back. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually going to put just a touch of a cream in the hair, just so that there's a touch of hold. I, um, this is just a men's grooming cream that Aveda makes. Um, we're in Aveda Salon. Uh, we do, We do have some things that Aveda doesn't make as far as uh, we have some keratins and things like that on that we use, but for the most part, 99.99% of the time, anything that I'm using is Aveda. And this cream is actually designed more for men than women, but I find that it's really nice and light. And I'm just blasting the hair dry and wrapping it up and around. Got a little excited there. But really just wrapping this hair dry very, very quickly. One thing that I'm kind of big about is this is uh, whether whatever kind of hair you're talking about, whether you're talking about curly hair, whether you're talking about men's hair, whether you're talking about you know, really long hair, really short hair. So many people want to worry about the hair cut and not the blow dry. And I have to tell you, the blow dry is just as important as the cut for your client. You don't want your client leaving not feeling like they've had an amazing blow dry because it will make them feel so much better walking out to the car, or wherever they're headed from the salon. And I will say this, there's 
been times in my life where I haven't been able to blow dry clients, and man, it just is not the same if you don't get to actually see the work dry and do your finishing and detailing work dry. Really very hard to be honest with you. So I've just wrapped both sides. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just using this vest brush. This is a um, vest brush pro. It's a vest brush pro 2000. I use this on probably at least 85% of my clients. I use this so much, it's not even funny. Um, and you can get them on Hairbrain. The Hairbrain uh, tool shop. Kelly will send them out to you. And I mean, we we actually retail them in our salon, and we I sell the hell out of them because here's what's nice about them: it's half of a round brush. You guys can see it's half of a round brush. It's not a flat bending brush, so I'm able to lift and put a little bit of root lift and a little bit of bend in the hair while still smoothing it out. You see on that right side how I got root lift just by leaping through. I don't pull her head off. She does not want to stay on the sand today. Almost dry, I got just a couple little sections left. So here's the other thing about it. I had mentioned earlier about, you know, you don't want the hair to be half wet or half dry. You wanna make sure that it's all the way dry and all the way wet because you really want to be able to, if it's dry, see what the hair is gonna look like. It's going to shrink up if there's any moisture in it. It's going to change, especially if you go outside in August when the humidity is crazy here in Georgia. So, through this top, a lot of times I see people that they would just go ahead and finish and they wouldn't cut, or I mean, wouldn't dry anymore because it looks most of the way dry. But to me, I like to go back through, loosen the hair up, see how it's gonna react. And then you also will notice that, oh, there was a touch of moisture just in one area. And by loosening it up, you're able to see what the hair is going to do. And you can see, I got quite a bit of volume through that top, just because of the brush and using a little bit of the grooming cream, because if I was just to have used a traditional Denman brush, I never would have gotten that nice lift and arc. Tighten her back up. And one other thing with my, this is my personal opinion. I know a lot of hairdressers who are very good hairdressers, only cut wet and never touch it when it's dry. I don't. I like to go back over the hair once it's dry. I, I feel like it needs, uh, I feel like my cuts are only about 80% there when, when it's dry. Thanks for uh, making it through the blow dry, guys. It really... I, I, totally, <laughs> I don't think there's anything fun about watching somebody blow dry. 
but it is definitely necessary in my opinion. So like I was saying, I feel like my haircut's only about 80% done at this point. Like this is a decent looking shape, right? But there's still work that needs to be done. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna comb all the hair over from one side to another and refine. So this hair through here, to me, I can see that right where that disconnection is, there's a band of weight. And it kind of flows all the way through to the back. So I'm gonna actually elevate just a little bit higher, take a little bit more weight out, and then do some seamless point cutting. So the diagonal section, almost, just above the parietal ridge is my section. Let's see if you guys can see. So there's my weight. I'm gonna pull this hair, let this comb down, pull this hair up, and I can see just a little bit of weight. And then I'm going to point into it. And I'm just doing some seamless point cutting. So I elevate up. There's that little bit of extra weight. Taking that off. From there, I'm pulling this hair out, leaving about an inch to an inch and a half away from my knuckle. And I'm cutting perpendicular to my line, parallel to the hair, and I'm just putting my scissors in and closing on the way out. So you guys can see that really helped that hair flow together much better. I'm gonna turn her a little bit more for you. I'm gonna continue right through. So there's my disconnection. I don't necessarily want to get rid of all my disconnection, um, but in that point, I just felt like it was adding a little bit of a line. So I took just that little corner off and now I'm pointing in. Yeah, and that makes that just flow together so much better. It's really coming together now. So from here, I'm gonna work up on the top. Oh, sorry, I gotta get her back in view. So now that I'm up on the top, I'm taking a horizontal section, I'm lifting this hair up. So this is my disconnection from the underneath. Lifting this hair up shifting out a little bit of weight and then doing some deep point cutting. So now that disconnection when it falls over there's no weight to it. It just kind of falls together seamlessly. I'll have two more sections up here on top and then I'll flip it over to the other side to do exactly the same. So from here A little bit of weight out. And then some deep pointing. <laughs> Rob says he's gotta leave because he's actually at the river. I knew that I was talking to Van earlier and he said that you tried to get him to go paddling with you this morning, but we actually have a big company Zoom meeting in an hour, so 
you know, I know you better get, you better go, uh, get on that call, buddy. So, uh, <laughs> great to talk to you though, my friend. So from here, just a touch more. This is where I really want to take, see how much weight there is in that? And I am really gonna, I don't want it to be shredded. I want to keep that shape, but that is really a heavy amount of hair, especially for hair that could be sweeping across the face or pushed back. You don't want it to, uh, you, know, you don't want that hair to just kind of flop right in the front into your eyes, which can happen very easily. So now, bringing all of this hair over to the right. Now, because I did so much refining, there's probably not gonna be as much weight that needs to come off, but I can see myself right through here, a little panel of weight. And even do a little bit of slicing right here. So when I slice, I'm not tearing through the hair. I'm just opening and closing, opening and closing, opening and closing. Someone just asked me, how did you find out that you wanted to become a hairdresser? So I actually grew up in a salon and where I grew up, uh, an area um, of Cincinnati called Hamilton is pretty infamous for like, if you're gonna, you don't really, it's not like, there's not a lot of PhDs that come out of that town. There's a lot of GEDs. And I was one of those kids that pretty much me and all my friends, um, we would, if, you know, after school was out, we were gonna end up being working in warehouses, working on in factories, uh, going to the military. And, you know, me going into my mom's salon, I was like, well, this seems a lot better where I can just sit around and talk to women in air conditioning all day than, you know, busting my ass in some sort of a factory, you know, shoveling coal or, you know, working at a paper mill. So I just thought, hey, I'm going to give it a shot. And uh, that was that was pretty young, man. I was probably like 13 when I started doing most of my friend's hair. And from there, you know, I just really my father um, worked for Aveda and he would take me to hair shows with him. Uh, this is um, this is actually where I met Rob Cook. And at that point, I really saw that there was more than just actually just doing hair in a salon, that there were hair shows and photo shoots and all these different outlets. And for me, someone who's pretty artsy, I thought this was great. I mean, I was definitely the kid who was not gonna be able to work behind a desk all day. And I would just, you know, I've been falling asleep. <laughs> it's very hard to keep me awake if I sit down at a desk. So, you know, it was it was very easy for me to find hair because uh, because so much of my family was into doing hair already. All right. Oh, hey Tracy, how are you doing? Um, and then somebody just said this is their favorite cutting comb. This is my favorite cutting comb. I have been using these Sessabon combs since the late 90s. And when Gerard showed me that they had a white one, I was like, you've gotta be kidding me. Cause I have, I mean, that's all I cut with is a white Sessabon comb or a um, white YS Park barbering comb. But um, for me, you know, I love this comb more than, <laughs> I love this, I mean, this is just, this is my, my go-to comb. So last little bit right through here, I'm taking a bunch of weight out of the front. And speaking of combs, this is my favorite cutting comb, but I'm going to now switch over to a bit of a wide tooth. This is why it's part, you can get these on hair brained as well, but it's a really wide tooth, which is great for combing the hair, kind of putting it into place, especially if you're dealing with like a kind of like a pompadour-esque look. And so for me, I really love having one of these. Uh, 
my friend Frank Gambuzi gave me this and I was like, eh, I don't know if I'm ever gonna like that. And then all of a sudden, uh, another friend of mine, Josh LaMonica, started using his little flick comb that he sells. And um, I loved the effect that he was getting from that, but I just like the feel of this better. So now I'm taking just a little bit of something called grooming clay. Um, I'm gonna kind of comb it through. Taking a little bit back. Yeah, I love this combo too. Somebody just said, you know, the the grooming cream in the hair. And I actually used a little bit of the Aveda's um, Nutriplenish, the, uh, the leave-in conditioner when I was combing this mannequin out so that the hair feels really silky, but then using the two clays and the, the cream and the clay, it's really gotten it, I don't wanna say dirty, but you know, it's, it's roughed it up enough for me that I can now, you know, work with the hair. How to make a good middle part? I'll tell you how to make a good middle part is by having a good comb. Just combing the hair back, combing the hair back, and then learning to use the front tooth to draw your line. That's your easiest way to make a good middle part. And this shape is now where I want it. So, yeah, this can definitely be worn forward. Very, a uh, little bit more emo-like effect, but I really love the kind of pompadour effect as well with the little bit of disconnection. So, I hope you guys like this. I am gonna put in a couple of uh, comments in there. So, you know, people asked about the scissors, I'll put the link up. Please don't hesitate. Please, you know, you can find me on Facebook, find me on Instagram. It's uh, Daniel J. Holzberger on Instagram. Uh, please don't hesitate. Come find me. If you have any questions, message me. If I can be in any help whatsoever, I'd love to be. And I really thank you guys for your time. And I hope you guys uh, got something out of today and had fun uh, hanging out with me. I appreciate you. Thanks.